fact that only about 11% of black and Hispanic students attend Southern High Schools is deeply tied to rate of to gain proficiency. In 2018, black and Hispanic students only compromised uh, 44% of applicants, and when proficiency levels are at 25% across the city, mathematically one would expect about 11% of offers to go to black and Hispanic students. We're failing our black and Hispanic students in long term transition to high school. This is systemic like 79% of our black and Hispanic students across the city is successful. We have the ability to target students who are struggling and we have the ability to support them. Yet the DOE time and time again fails to do so. Corona, one of the largest hubs in the Latinx community in New York City, also happens to be some has, happens to have some of the most overcrowded schools New York City has over, ever seen. Overcrowding means students sit on radiators and in the hallways. It means having a gym and a combined cafeteria, gymnasium, and auditorium shared between multiple schools squeezed into one building. It means refusing to give our students an equitable opportunity. Everyone deserves the same opportunity I have. It's about time we expand the stress of high schools and create more pathways to high achievement schools while integrating from a much earlier age. Thank you for holding this hearing and allowing me to speak on behalf of all our New Yorkers. So I just say to you that you said everything you needed to say, but people were saying that you were speaking so fast. But obviously you, you presented your, your testimony, uh, but you were speaking so fast that I don't know whether or not everyone comprehended exactly what you said. And it seems as though my mic is louder than yours. So can we switch mics? Because quite frankly, we want to be here. You, everyone wants to hear you nice and clear. So we just ask, we have another mic besides this one, Jordan. Can I have that? Can I have that one, please? So anyone who speaks, please just speak right into the mic so everybody will hear. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Those are the only two mics. Those are the only two mics? Okay, that's a better mic. Okay? Thank you. Great. Right. Whoever's next. Right. Next, Your Honor, can you call the next speaker? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Time to I'm going to speak fast, too, although I've submitted my testimony. Okay, very good. Speak directly into the mic so everybody can hear you loud and clear. So whenever you're ready, take your time. Good evening. My name is Kevor Quimian, and I'm the father of a student who graduated from Cyrus in 2017 and a student who will graduate from Bronx Science this year. I've been walking the halls of specialized high schools for the last six years as a parent volunteer and a track dad. I agree in all sincerity that the lack of diversity in these schools is abysmal, but I don't think the problem is the SHSAT, because in selective schools like Bart, Beacon, Townsend, Harris, the lack of diversity is only slightly less dreadful, and they do not use the SHSAT. Blaming the SHSAT is simply political pandering at best and shameful cynicism at worst. I believe the problem lies in preparation for these schools uh, through K-8 K GNT programs speak these schools, and they have been decimated or eliminated in large swaths of the city. Even where they still exist, like my community in Queens, information on attending these programs is severely lacking. Consider the example of my two daughters, born in 1999 and 2001. Even though my wife has two master's degrees, she was a stay-at-home mom when it was time to register our daughters in GNT. Even with her time and worldliness, it took weeks to figure out that while we were zoned for PS49, the test was offered in PS87, and the programs were housed in PS-153. It seems simple now, but it was a Herculean effort to muddle through the process. Over the years, armed with all this insight, we have guided no fewer than five children of friends and neighbors into GNP programs. Their parents simply lack knowledge of the existence or the awareness of the programs or the information how to navigate the system without our, our expertise. So before we blame the SHSAT, city's resources would be better served by broadening the GNT and perhaps more importantly, providing better information on the programs that do exist. Okay, I regularly volunteer at New York City High School fairs and see first rate, uh, first uh, and how members of some communities armed with knowledge of every minutia of the specialized programs, while parents from other communities lack like knowledge of even the basics of the process, like the date of the test. And I assure you, the love of these parents for their children is no less than any other group. They just don't know the process. Thank you. Thank you. 
The District 2 President's Council voted unanimously with over 30 members present, there's over 30 different schools present, to support a proposal by some C District 2 CC members to ask the mayor to revamp and go back and redo this proposal. Um, and I also, but what I really want to talk about tonight very briefly is I'm really disturbed about the rhetoric that I've been hearing lately that has characterized this debate. I am deeply um, upset about the fact that I'm hearing things that the DOE is characterized by toxic toxicity or toxic whiteness, and I'm, I'm very disturbed with the language that chooses to label anybody who is opposed to the mayor's plan as either a racist or privileged or using any of those labels. And I think that we need to look and focus on the things that unite us, not divide us. And my mother spent 41 years working for the Board of Education. She believed that education provided an opportunity and it provided an opportunity for, to develop and find human potential. And I think that's what we need to do. We need to continue to support these schools and fix the problem. Uh, and and that, that the only way we can fix that problem is by addressing the, the cause of that problem, not trying to to, to uh, get rid of the SHSAT, which is just the effect of the problem, which is K through eight education. Thank you.
it's almost like an afterthought. We just had no preparation, and uh, we went down and took this test. And I didn't do that well, because I prided myself on being very good on math. And there was the math section, and then halfway through the test, they said, even if you haven't finished it, move on to the verbal. I just kept working on those math problems. Because I had never been faced with math problems I couldn't do before. As it turns out, we just hadn't been taught that level of math. Um, I didn't get in. But both of my brothers, and a couple years later, they got a little bit of preparation and they did get in. So I went to junior high school 143, and we had a couple of really special teachers there uh, in the math department. We had uh, a couple of really special teachers there that did this accelerated math program. They decided that the seventh graders in my class were going to do ninth year math and take the regents. And then the next year, we skipped eighth grade with that three year and two thing. Ninth grade, we did 11th year math and took the regents. They also, I'd like to say, prepped us, they drilled us for the Stuyvesant Bronx Science test. Back then, it was Stuyvesant Bronx Science and Brooklyn Tech. And we were sort of told, well, those are science and math high schools, but those were really academic high schools. And I mean, they were not politically correct. They said, listen, you want to go to G-Dubs? No, then you better study. G-Dubs is George Washington, the local high school, because if you didn't get into those schools, that's where you were going. Most of the kids, sorry, most of the kids in my class got in. I got a perfect score and everything was simple vocabulary. Perfect. And, well, perfect. It's because we were getting some advanced math instruction, because we studied our asses off for that test. The only thing that makes those schools special, and I've worked as a teacher, my dad was a teacher in public high schools, the only thing that makes those schools special is the students that are in them. Not the teachers, not the facilities, it's the students. The test is not perfect, but it's the best way we have now. And it's one other thing. These statistics you have are very misleading. It says how many black students are going in, how many were admitted? But then before that, how many black and Latino students, some of the best black and Latino students we have, are taken out of that pool by programs like Prep for Prep, where they're put into fancy boarding schools to get a free ride? Okay. You have to take that into account. Next speaker, we ask the speakers, would you come up just identify yourself? So by your name so that everybody knows who you are, that we know who you are, please speak to us. We are the ones up here, John Lou, myself, and then other state senators and state assembly members are going to address the issue. So please, I ask you to address your comments to us who's holding this here. And you can stand there so people can see you, but we will not ask you to speak to them, because you're not talking to them, you're talking to us. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. I will talk to you, Senators uh, Jackson, and thank you very much for holding this. I'm Wei Wan Chen, um, from the uh, President of the Chinese American Citizens Alliance of Greater New York. I want to make several things clear. One is that, uh, as Asian Americans, we are a member of this community, and we believe that what is good for the entire community is also good for us. The status quo is not acceptable. The status quo of Poor education for wide swaths of this city is an outrage. We spend double the average in this city on our students per day system uh, than the average for the entire country. We spend double the Finnish schools when people talk about Finland being so great. Well, we spend double the amount. So maybe what we should do is cut it in half and maybe we'll do better. But that's not the solution. The solution is trying to get gifted and talented back in all the schools in all the districts for the black and Latinas uh, because they have lost it. And for 20 straight years, they were the majority of Brooklyn Tech. So the test worked. The test is not the problem. We should be focusing on trying to get all the parts of this city to work and study better. So this test, the changes that are being proposed are racist. They are racist when your Department of Education comes out with these charts and say, we're going to target and cut the Asians by in half. Now, you can put it any way you want. The result is that we are targeted. And this kind of discussion now, it has been more divisive than anything I've heard. When you have this kind of remarks that we've heard 
in some of these forms, when a child could be in one of the forms, be taught to brought to task by two senators, not for what she said. She did not say anything racist. She was called racist. And then later, if somebody, an adult, was racist, she was not called racist. We have to stop that kind of racism. And the only way to stop it is really by focusing on the pin task, which is to educate everybody and stop pitting one group of poor children against another. Okay, now you may begin, sir. Just speak close to the mic. Okay. 
And I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk here about my research, which has recently been published in the Journal of Women and Minorities in Science and Engineering. Uh, I will try to keep it brief and non-technical. If you're the director of admissions for the specialized high school, your goal is to admit students who are most likely to succeed in the schools. How would you predict how a student will do in high school if you know nothing about the student? Can you hold the mic closer to your mouth? Okay. You might guess the average freshman grade point average of 88. In some cases, your guess would be a good prediction of how the students would do, but there would be a lot of error. If you use the specialized admissions test, you will reduce the error a little bit. Um, but based on my study, who went to high school, students who entered high school in 2014 reduced the error by 20%. The city's meta study showed very similar results. But what about the other 80% of the error? The state achievement tests do better than the Shazap, reducing error by 28%. In my study, I found that seventh grade GPA was far better than either of these, reducing error by 44%. The only possible justification for the current outcomes with respect to diversity would be if the Shazap were a valid criterion, that is to say, a good predictor. But the data show that it isn't a good predictor. If you have better predictors and middle school grades are far better, why not use them? Standards of the American Educational Research Association stipulate that one test should never be the sole criterion of admission. You also want your admission policy to be gender fair. The Shazat is biased against girls. I don't mean that there are questions about hockey, but there's a statistical bias and that girls do better in high school than the mean than the exam would predict. In my study on average, girls are in GPAs four points better than predicted by the Shazat. That means that many girls are being rejected in favor of boys who are likely to achieve at a lower level in high school. In 2013, 51% of the applicants were girls, but only 44% of those admitted. It's clear that as a sole admissions criteria, Shazat is unfair to girls. It's ironic that tests such as the SAT and Shazat that were designed to provide us uniform metric or less accurate predictors in GPA, which is compiled across different courses, schools, teachers, and standards. When you think about it, that's not so surprising. Those are only three hour samples of performance as opposed to a full year of performance across the whole range of academic domains. Thank you. Thank you.
I'll start, I'll end with, I'm certain that all of my students here in the Heights, whether or not they were successful in the SHSAT, are wonderful and worthy. But measurements like the SHSAT continue to undermine all of their sense of worth. And we can't stand for a system that makes any of our students feel less than or that gives them less opportunity. Thank you. Next, please. Thank you, Senators Blue and Jackson and George Lee and Parent. We're going to do a phrase of the day today, today's phrases, to talk out of both sides of your mouth. An example, one side of the mouth says, Asian parents, you are too obsessed over the specialized high schools. There are so many other good schools for your kids. The other side of the mouth says, we must get more black kids into Stuyvesant now. Can you talk to us, please? Thank you. What? Talk to us, please. Another example. One side of the mouth says, cram schools just rip off poor immigrants, immigrants who pay thousands of dollars for unregistered, unlicensed instructors. They are scam. That's actually two sides of it. Poor immigrants, thousands of dollars. Sorry, this, this is going to be a three-sided mouth. The third side says, Asians are only getting, are only acing the SHSAT because they go to cramp schools. Unlicensed, unregistered scam. Acing the test. What? And as an aside, Cram schools don't just teach to the test. If that's all they did, kids would succeed at the most advanced STEM curricular in the city. If that's all they did, test to teach the test, kids won't succeed at the most advanced STEM curricular in the city. Sorry, this mouth has four. This mouth has four sides. It's a really big mouth. I don't know. Ask around. The fourth side. Yes, Assembly Member, my DOE does run a five million dollar test prep program, but it doesn't work. So one side, <coughs> test prep gets Asians in. The other side, my test prep doesn't work. What? For tomorrow, the phrase of the day is shoot the messenger. Thank you. Marcus Austin, followed by Alexander Rodriguez, Fred Acone. Thank you. My name is Marcus, and I'm a student at Pace High School. The Little Rock Nine is what I'm reminded of as I walk into this building. A group of colored kids then protesting for integration, and a group of colored kids now posting, protesting for integration. The Big Apple, one of the most diverse cities in the country, but yet has one of the most segregated school systems in the nation. I can't help but wonder why some of, my, some of the people in this audience believe that myself and my peers didn't work hard and strive hard enough to make it to the specialized high schools, because the fact of the matter is that we did. The truth is that the SHSAT does not test your ability to solve math problems, but it tests your ability to obtain prep, to have parents that don't have to work two jobs to keep food on the table, to be privileged. I always thought that the endless opportunities I'd get uh, if I lived on the Upper West Side, but I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to be from a wealthy family to be able to succeed in a public educational system. That is not fair. To my fellow brown people, we will get justice one day. To the mayor, do not dare campaign to be the face of the United States when black and Latinx students in New York City are falling into racially oppressive systems and are being robbed of an, ed of an education. Don't you dare. And to the people who support the SHSAT, if you are okay with your children benefiting from a system that allows black children to be snatched from an opportunity, put into schools that resemble jails, and to be excluded based on their race and socioeconomic class, may God have mercy on your soul. Please hold down your applause. We, because you're all you're all wasting time by doing that. I ask you to please listen. 
listen to the speakers, and everyone has a right to speak. But please, let's hold down the applause so we can hear and focus on what the hearing is about. Thank you. Please go ahead, Jim. Thank you. I am Alexander Rodriguez, the Direct Action Fellow at Team State Charge. It is no longer news that New York City hosts the most segregated school system in the country. So when I come all the way from Brooklyn to debate for an education that was promised to me 65 years ago, I want my demands to be addressed with urgency. Because not only am I frustrated, but so are the parents, the siblings, and the students, and the 96,000 students that attend 78 schools. No more beating around the bush of racism. It is disgraceful that my government is caring more about their image, the politics, and the voices of privileged parents than their own students that the system has failed. I am tired of it. Senators, do your job. Ensure that the 96,000 students don't become wronged because the voices determining policy are voices who don't understand what it's like to have to teach themselves an entire AP bio class. Voices who don't understand what it's like to exhaust your school's curriculum. Voices who do not understand what it's like to be patted down every morning before attending a basic history class. I stand on the shoulders of people like Ernest Green, Elizabeth Eckford, and Joanne Boyce. So I hope that me speaking to you all finally communicates a sense of urgency that is long overdue. So to the parents who propose or believe in the proposal of expanding access to SHSAT tests and expanding GMT programs, I believe these views are short-sighted. Why? Because expanding access to these things does not solve lifelong educational inequalities. I spoke to the Director of Compliance Services at the DOE, and she personally told me that, GNT, that with GNT programs, principals often handpick the four-year-olds that get into these programs, and a strong determinant to that picking is whether that child has PTA influence. This is preposterous. And just as a side note, since when is it normal for a four-year-old to be taking a test? <laughs> Many politicians have spoken to me and my peers at Team State Charge, expressing their humble beginnings and claim that this issue is important. But in practice, these same politicians implement policies that do not help and in fact severely harm the people they are supposed to represent. I am only one student, but I am just one example of the many students that you should be listening to and serving. I don't want talk. I don't want to hear how important this is to you. I don't want my compliments on my leadership. I want action. So parents, Please conclude. Yes. Too many parents are too many too many parents are determining a child's education, and it's time for us to actually implement the Supreme Court law that was ordered 65 years ago. Thank you. Can you anyone who gives a testimony reading from their Android or iPhone? Can you email that to the committee if you don't mind? Thank you. Please, especially the last two the young men, email it to us. All right. So I won't print it out. I'll read it from my phone. Thank you. Uh, Fred Acoleo, followed by Chris Giordano, Flora Wong, and Carol Mullen. Sirs, I'd like to say something before I start, point of order. Um, I read the flyer for this evening, and uh, it was called the Community Speak Out. And I came here, I was also told I have three minutes when I signed up online. So I came here, and now I hear the two minutes, I respect that. But I would like to speak to the audience as well as you guys, and I think it's a community speak out means that people can chime in when they feel something. I'm sorry, I feel very constrained by this kind of courtroom atmosphere. Not a courtroom atmosphere. That's why we ask people to stand back so that we can. That's what they say in court, and they can hear you. Okay, I would like to speak to the crowd as well as you because it's a public community speak out. It said it in the flyer. It's not a speak out. It's a it says it in the flyer. Community it's speak out. Read your, your own flyer, please. I'm speaking. All right. Start, um, start I've been teaching for 32 years, and I've been 22 years at George Washington campus. And honestly, the campus has gotten worse since I've been there. Um, it's, uh, it, 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 there's, there's not a white student to be found in that school since I have been at that school. Um, but five years ago, in spite of those odds, our school was rated the number one education option school in the entire city. That means for open admission school, my school, High School for Law and Public Service, was the best. And the reason we were the best is because we had dedicated teachers that took ESL students, that took students with ones on the, on the test, and brought them to a very high level. We had a great team. We've been cut and cut and cut, and we're not able to do that anymore. The school is in a crisis. 
So this is the state of our school right now. You sir know, Jackson, because we had this campaign for fiscal equity. We never got that money. We never got the money from the budget cuts since the 2008 crisis. We never got those restored. We used to have a Regents Art program in our school. We've had a slew of AP courses. They're canceling AP courses now in my school. That's the situation right now. Um, so trillions, though, are being spent on wars all around the world and on increasing the military budget, still like 30, 50 billion a year. Um, things used to say, is a, a op-ed in the Times 20 years ago, if you want to get rid of the ghetto schools, you gotta get rid of the ghetto. We still have ghettos in my neighborhood, which is being gentrified. This is a big part of what's happening right now in the schools is tied into the major gentrification that's going on across the city, especially in Washington Heights. My students are being driven out of the neighborhood, enrollment is down, people are living in crisis, but they're gonna give three billion to Jeff Bezos to come to New York City. And that's fine, because he says he doesn't know what to do with all his money, he's gonna invest in space. That's the kind of society we live in. It's a profit-driven society that leaves schools like mine and students like mine at the bottom. Until we change that, until we unite, and get rid of the division, as many people have said, we're gonna be stuck in this system forever. So it might seem like a big pie in the sky thing, we gotta get rid of the profit system, because a society that cannot take care of its young people does not deserve to exist. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, please. Hi, I'm Chris PTA co-president at MS54 Booker Washington, uh, District 3 Middle School in the Manhattan Valley. I'm secretary of the District 3 President's Council Equity Committee. The DOE's Byzantine system of choices, screens, preferences, and priorities is inequitable by design. And rather than fix the inequities they have in their control, the mayor and chancellor are spending their political capital on those 1% of seats in the system controlled by state law established by students who are performing above grade level specialized high schools. Further to the systemic inequities implemented by the DOE, each year parents spend hours trying to understand the selection algorithms and ranking systems and strategies and track down updated information. Just this year, when the DOE allowed Millennium Manhattan to change its admissions prior to days before the application deadline, many families were impacted by that. They did not get the information. This coming year, the school system has decided that December 23, Monday, December 23, is a school day. So families are faced, rising seventh grade, uh, seventh grade um, parents are faced with the choice of going to visit family or kid, having their kid at school on Monday, December 23, um, if the kid's not there, the chance of them getting into a screen, non-specialized school, will be hurt. As for District 3, each year the majority of the district's 1,400 plus 8th graders apply to specialized high schools. About... As, as for District 3. This is going to get extra time. I can talk about it. Okay, as for District 3, each year the majority of the district's 1,400 eighth graders apply to specialized high schools. About half of those applicants, about 300 students, are in specialized high school offers. But if the mayor's 7% quota proposal passes, that number would plummet to about 100. At Booker T alone, the more than 150 typically offered seats would be reduced to 20. Those District 3 students are in the only Manhattan district without admissions priority to any high schools and are restricted from many of the high quality college prep schools outside of District 3 due to admissions priorities granted to other districts. In short, in short the specialized high schools are their only option. And in a system where only 5% of the high schools offer a minimum of four core STEM AP classes, those students have no alternatives appropriate to their level. At the city council hearing, the chancellor admitted that while he prefers multiple measures, he admitted this just that is an efficient way of identifying talent. Looking at the data, it appears the Chancellor is right. The Shazak schools significantly outperformed the top 19 non-specialized 
with a similar size group of 16,000 students. The Shazak schools are 180 points higher in SAT scores. Their ACT scores are four to five points higher. They generate 200 national merit semifinalists versus 27 at the non-specialized, and their region scores are more than seven points higher at the top, at the top non-specialized. Regardless, looking at the inequities that DOE manages in the current system, you may have to ask whether the bureaucracy that manages the system with choices, screens, priorities, and preferences should be trusted with those specialized high schools. Throughout history, authoritarian administrations governed by providing a scarcity of resources and pitting segments of the population against each other to fight over those resources, many in our community see this strategy as a proposal that's a smoke screen to cover up the administration's inability to deliver more college fresh education. Thank you. Thank you. So my point of view is the following. 
have a major, major job to do here in New York City. Our schools, many of our schools, need much, much to be desired. We Americans know how to educate. People all over the world use the educational research generated in this country to improve the quality of education in their countries. So my request is a big job. It can't happen overnight. But we must commit ourselves to educating our children, to providing a quality education for all children. Thank you.
In her youth, also carries strong personal bias. If you and the uh, mayor proposed use the local middle schools GPA. First, the local GPA lack the comparability of each, be, between schools, but only to be used within a school. Uh, a in one school is not equal to A in another school, right? And another side effect, a problem introduced by the mayor's proposal is that we'll introduce local internal competition. So we think that school they should be collaborative study learning. If you let them compete a few spots, we are classmates and now we know we, we two are compete for that spot. Then that causes a disruption of collaborative learning. That's a big problem. If we think the current SH, SAT scores didn't really reflect the student's ability, we can try to improve it, but not abandon it. We should focus on our effort, put on our efforts on making the K take a bigger. We should fund more specialized high school. We shouldn't focus on how to cut the cake. We shouldn't take a piece away from one person and give it to another person. Okay, thank you. Yes, right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go ahead, please. I'm sorry. 
Good evening, my name is Nara Angar and I'm a junior at Brooklyn Technical High School. I went to a middle school, IS-187, where the majority of students received and accepted offers to specialized high schools despite being in a part of Brooklyn where there are not enough middle schools. At IS-187, we enjoyed flight simulators, MacBooks, and a highly motivated student body. But the bubble I lived in left me ignorant to the struggles that many students across New York City faced. I broke this bubble when I met students at my schools who came from schools where they were the only student accepted into a specialized high school. Many people associate students from these schools with a poor work ethic and low motivation to achieve, but they had no knowledge of the SHSAT safety until the month before the test. The information they did receive was vague and poorly presented, yet they were some of the most high-achieving students at Brooklyn Tech. When schools are not well integrated, we cannot see the potential of students across the city. As a result, our perception is narrowed to a single idea of what other communities look like, one that is built on stereotypes and misconceptions that diffuse quickly because no one is there to correct them. But students capable of excelling academically exist in all parts of the city, yet the student populations of specialized high schools are far from reflecting that. The SHSAT has existed for decades, yet it has continued to exclude some of the brightest students in the city by looking at every student through the same broken lens. It doesn't take into account work ethic, determination to succeed, character, and so many other characteristics that truly represent a student's ability to, to, to succeed. When you study fixed data aid, but not the test, you imply that the SHSAT is an effective way to evaluate students, which has no substantial proof. There is no proof that students who excel on the SHSAT are any more capable of success than students who do poorly. There are so many other factors that can measure a student's ability, and if we began using them, we would certainly see a rise in both geographical and racial representation in specialized high schools. Thank you.
Khan and Allison Schilling Ward. Hello, Senator Liu, Senator Jackson. My name is Shanghai Ramudit. I am a newly reelected member of the Community Education Council for District 3. This is the district that has been cited as the most segregated school district in New York City's school system. So what I present to you today is testimony on my personal behalf and it does not represent the views of our council as a whole. I did not grow up in New York City public schools. I grew up in Florida. My parents are from Trinidad. Neither of them graduated from high school. I went, they believed in public school education. They sent me to various public schools. I was an army grad, so I traveled around. In one school, I was considered gifted. In another school, I was not. Then I moved again, considered gifted again. An interesting, interesting experience to have. When I was in middle school, the high school that I ended up going to would, was an international baccalaureate school. So I um, attended a school which uh, qualified me for the, the diploma and is considered one of the programs that makes you college ready as a student. Did I know that? No. Would my parents have known that? No. If there had been a test to get into that program, would I have passed it? I, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I ended up going to Columbia University. I have a biomedical engineering degree, and, and what that means is I have a trait to look at patterns. Look at patterns and um, understand how to protect what future measures those patterns can um, give us. So in this area of education, I would like to state that the Shazad is a test that perpetuates structural racism. All you have to do is take a look at the results of the test that says students, that screens out a vast majority of a particular demographic. And I will just close and say that in my experience, my children are being raised in, to understand that um, social, emotional, and um, diversity is the yeah, uh, yeah, most important to prepare them for the future. And parents who had a very privileged, had their children advance in a privileged um, school setting, they feel like they did their children a disservice Thank by you. not exposing them to diversity. <laughs> I did not get into science because I'm in wrong science right now. 
Um, so I learned from that prep that it's more about will than it is about prep. Because some preps, they really just don't help and it really determines um, how much children are having in prep for the specialized high school tests. Uh, I want to move on to a quote by Kenneth Chu. And he said, he never had this problem when Stuyvesant was all white. He never had this problem when Stuyvesant was all Jewish. All of a sudden, they see one too many Asian and they go, hey, this isn't right. So, I don't, so the SHSAT has become a racial Olympiad, and this isn't what it should be harmed. We shouldn't be blaming the SHSAT, but rather just blaming the system, because it starts in elementary. And I want to talk to you about my middle school, which was lab middle school. So in lab, I would say at least 50% of the kids from my middle school thought it just specialized high school. If Mayor Bill's Lawson's had, plan had passed when we were in middle school, a lot of us wouldn't have had the chance to attend a specialized high school. I want to leave you with this final thought today. The test isn't the problem, the system is. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Allison Schoenford, and I'm the founder and executive director of Navigate the Maze to Achievement, an educational nonprofit that prepares black students for the specialized high school admissions test. I'm sorry for the specialized high school admissions test and supports them academically and socially while they're, while they're in high school. We are currently preparing our third cohort for the Shazam. Experience has taught me that the test is not the problem, the test is not racist, and black and Latino students are not less intelligent or capable. The problem is, <laughs> the problem is that black and Latino students are not being taught the level of algebra and geometry that they need to pass the Shazam. Grammar was added to the Shazak, but is not being taught in schools, at least not in the schools of my community. At MTMA, we do not conduct test prep. We teach. Every Saturday during the spring semester and six weeks during the summer, we teach our students algebra, geometry, how to read word problems analytically. We teach grammar and how to annotate you know, nonfiction, fiction, and poetry. We help, over, help them overcome their dependence on calculators and reference sheets, as well as to stay focused during a time test. As a result, our program, 35% of NTMA, NTMA students receive offers to specialized high schools this year. Compared to 4% of black students, 28.5% of white students, 51.1% of Asian students. To put this into perspective, one in every 27 black students that received an offer to specialized high school is an NTMA student. Black students make up, made up 23% of all seventh graders citywide, and about 14% of all seventh graders citywide who scored three and higher on the state math and ELX exams. It is from this pool of students, those who have demonstrated the attitude and attitude to pass to that, that we need to tap into and teach the subject. I am aware of the dream of the discovery program provided by the NYC building. The city needs to reassess the qualification for this program to ensure a more diversified, specialized high school population. And so a black student who, whose guardian is a social worker, and this is a cut off by four points, is not currently eligible for the discovery program due to income implications. Looking at how we can include all the voices. 
Because this change is very dramatic, it has set off a lot of alarm. And as you know, alarm is a great motivator. If you're alarmed and you're nervous, you will get out there and you will speak. But what I'm striving to do is, is capture the people who might not even know to be alarmed, might not know that the specialized high schools are an option, are on the table, are part of the process. So my little quick, less than two minute speech is just to be cautious that you really are aware of the wide range of opinion, even in a district like the Upper West Side and Southern Harlem. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's going to be brief and I hope shocking. I went to Scottish. I graduated in 1954. I don't call myself African American. If you can't say I'm African, that's your problem. I call myself black. Once you say black, everybody gets like that. I get on the subway and I say, everybody loves dark skin sex, but they don't want a dark skin baby. Everybody goes to the next car. Okay, I know your father. Come see me where your father used to sit. You know where that is. Robert Rudd. My father? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> this is all I want to say. How many Dominicans are here? Not a shame. We call this, so we, we, in my age group, we call this little Dominican Republic. Sir, huh? Talk to us, please. Oh, no, I'm talking to everybody. I'm talking to everybody. <laughs> uh, this is what I want to say. Call yourself Dominican. When I came up, Latino. You know who's Latino? Italian. Talk to us, please. You do not know Latino. Say I'm from the Dominican Republic background, that makes me Dominican. I'm Puerto Rican, I was here before the Dominicans. I just saw a film of uh, Robert Kennedy. And I never saw the film before. King Jr. just got shot. Two months later, pow, he got shot. And I noticed he said thank you. At, at, at this rally, he said thank you. Uh, the black community. He didn't say African American, he said black. Y'all know who you are. Everybody else want to be you, but they haven't paid the price. And then he said Mexican Americans. And the whole country, as far as I'm concerned, is their country. Any indigenous, Mexican, uh, but Florida, Seminole, I'm, I'm Cherokee. And the other part, black. That's all you gotta know. Everybody comes from black, but they want to be in denial, but they want to play. They Thank know. you. All I'm saying is, when young, I've been teaching culture, and I went to Sabbath, so I could go in the corporate world. I don't want to go in the corporate world. Thank I'm you. the corporate world. Thank you. You got me? Yeah. And I'm the corporate world. Thank you. Young people, thank you. Young people walk up to me and say, Mr. You remember me? You said if you don't play Tom Porter, you're not Dominican. Thank you. different cultures to come together and know one another. 
three points about systemic racism in this debate. It is good that so many people on all sides of this debate acknowledge the root cause of disparity as systemic racism. It is bad and unfair to ask today's black children to wait until adults and politicians resolve this most stubborn of all American social problems before they can have a chance at our specialized high schools. Read Martin Luther King's book, Why We Can't Wait. I would like to make four recommendations. Number one, expand access by, number one, setting aside seats for African Americans and Latinos. Number two, using multiple modes of assessment. Three, assuring every public middle school can send its top students. And four, creating more seats so that Asian Americans can continue to benefit from these schools, but in a healthy, diverse environment that will make them better citizens and make us a better city. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Senators. My name is Guido Mabella. I am the uh, current PTO president of the Christopher McCall School. We sent 200 or 300 eighth grade students to specialized high schools in District 20. Um, I'm also a CDC 20 elect. I found out last night, so I want to continue. Thank you. So before I have a few minutes, so I want to please encourage you first to oppose the bill that is currently in front of you, or the, the, the proposed bill about the SHSAT and to support the bill for the gifted and talented expansion. I'll submit my testimony as well as letters from middle schools to, um, to support these two things. But since I'm going to go off script for a second, and I want to talk to you about so my grandmother and my mother, a long time ago, they needed a place to stay. And the people who were privileged and powerful at the time didn't want to rent to them because they were dirty Italians. And my grandmother took my mom by the hand, walking up this, down the streets of Brooklyn, trying to find someone to rent them an apartment. And I think about my mother and grandmother when I have an Asian mom come to me in my role as PTO president with her little girl by the hand and say, Ito, why are they doing this to me? Why, are, why is the mayor doing this? What can we do? So yes, I'm standing up to help them, because that breaks my heart. But I also hear that there were 2,600 black kids who scored four or better on the math and the ELA and didn't get offers to specialized high schools. And that pisses me off too. There shouldn't be an either or. We have to fix this. Senator Lou, when you were controller, you did an audit, so you know that um, multiple measures has issues. 8% of the kids accepted to screen high schools weren't eligible. Whose kids were those? And what can we do to increase the number of seats in this city so that everybody who would do well in these schools, everybody who wants to go to one of these schools, has a seat in one of these schools? Thank you very much. Good evening, Senators. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, my name is Jeff Wu, uh, and like my well-spoken colleague before me, uh, I'm an educator in an organization uh, that helps students accomplish their academic goals outside of school time. Uh, we provide free Common Core aligned, and therefore SHSAT aligned enrichment to 600 families from across New York City. These families are comprised of all races, all socioeconomic backgrounds, all walks of life. The only requirement is that the students show up regularly, do their homework, and work hard. What we do is help students catch up on what they may have missed in class. Uh, what we're doing uh, isn't any you know, secret sauce. Uh, we can't wave a magic wand 
and get students into a specialized high school. What we can do is help students master the concepts underlying the common core and therefore the test. This benefits students for the SHSAT and well beyond. It's hard to say, uh, hardly a stretch to say that algebra and reading skills are important to a successful life. Attending after school enrichment, whether paid or otherwise, doesn't guarantee a seat in a specialized high school. What it does do is give students the opportunity to learn what may have been missed, and what it does do is give students uh, the framework to unlock their own potential. Our program exists because of perceived uh, inequality in our education system. What we should focus on instead of scapegoating the test is improving the quality of education at all stages of life. What we should do uh, is instead of focusing on, on our animus on the test, is to expand the number of seats in our specialized high schools. Our program exists because of perceived scarcity. If we can eliminate that scarcity, and if we can improve quality, we can improve outcomes, we can improve diversity at the same time. Thank you very much. We have a fellow Lawrence, Shannon Just, Raymond Stout, David, Mald, At Albany's Capitol, I personally met with Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who reencountered to me his father's important and fitting for our discussions words. As a little boy, Senator Kennedy told little Bobby these four words, and I quote, people in power a lot. The Blasio's Quran is line number one. The SHSAT test is not a valid test because it is not aligned with the common core curriculum. The SHSAT test has in fact been validated by a formal 2013 study commissioned at the Blasio's request and had kept secret from the public side for five years and in 2017 was yet again completely aligned with New York Common Core curriculum which is taught to all of our New York City public school children. The SHSAT study found that I quote, a strong positive predictive relationship with student achievement during the first two years of high school, measured by grades, scores on advanced placement tests, and reading exams. 
So why can't the black and Hispanic children score high enough on these two different yet both completely aligned with common core curriculum exams? Let me be very clear here. Black and Hispanic children didn't all of a sudden get dumb because they aren't dumb. To the contrary, as clearly evidenced by Brooklyn's Tech, 2,000 black children and 500 to 1,000 Hispanic children in Tech, a 75% majority during the 70s and 80s. Today's black children and Hispanic children cannot score high enough on the SAT exam and the New York State Math and ELA test scores because they have been done a horrendous miscarriage of justice and been failed by past and present mayors, chancellors, politicians, by their removing of the special programs gifted in town. All New Yorkers should be outraged at the feeble attempt at blaming the SHAP test as a scapegoat. The Blasio and Carranza want to eliminate the SHAP test and put its place principal recommendations, subject of school grades, school projects, etc. This is ridiculous and should never, ever be permitted. An A in one school is the equivalent of a B in another. I want to personally thank New York selected public advocate, Jumani Williams, a black man, who unlike the bill sponsors, Assemblyman Charles Barron represents all New York City children. It was pathetic to watch Barron Chai Williams personally been saying, and I quote, the public advocate is not supporting a bill that's going to get us, meaning blacks, from 9% to 45%. Shame on you, Barron, said the Williams, to boost from the park. This is racist at its finest, and I call it out. Mr. Williams stood tall to Barron, and again I quote, unlike yourself, Barron, I represent all of New York City's children. You have to conclude, sir. I will conclude. I am presenting something that I think can provide access to everyone without pitting the Asian community and the Black and Latino community. Don't sir, pit no, two no, races, sir, no, Asians and no, whites, Blacks and against Latinos. Keep the SHSAT test. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. you have to conclude or we're going to cut off the mic. Because I know we're going to get thrown in to put anything up against our side. Being disrespectful to everybody. Yeah, that's right. You are disrespecting all the other speakers. Would you like Can my testimony? Would you like my testimony? Yes, we want your testimony. Yes. Submit it. Yes. Submit it. Summarize. Everyone has to summarize. We have to be respectful of the time limitation. And please, no one put signs up here. If you have something to show, show it. But don't block our sign. We have an order in here so everyone can be respectful. That's what we want. Except, except, except for this gentleman. He is more important than everybody else in this auditorium. Please go ahead. Yeah. My name is Sharon Chess. I'm PA co-president, SLT chair, and parent of three. I have listened to both sides on this issue over the past year, and I'm here to present a possible path forward to meet everyone's needs. I'm on the D3 High School Committee, and we combined DOE demographic, high school directory data, test results, city state ranking for all New York high schools. The Shashat schools enroll around 15,500 students, so I grouped them to compare to the top 19 non-specialized, which enroll 16,000, using various admission methods. Purely on an academic basis, not looking at demographics, the Shashat schools significantly outperform the top 19 non-specialized. They score 180 points higher on the 1600 SAT, 45 higher on the ACT, 7 higher on the regions. Unless you think the top non-specialized schools, Nest, Elmer, Roosevelt, are failing to teach their children, that means the students selected solely via Shashat perform better academically than the children selected via mixed admissions. The question of Shashat is not, should not be framed as get rid of the Shashat because other things predict performance better. That's just not correct. The question is whether the Shashat misses students who could otherwise have performed those levels. The status quo is not acceptable because it has led to Shashat schools under low black and Hispanic children. The DOE proposal is not acceptable because a child of 99 percent and two years ahead in math, but third in their 30 person homeroom, gets left out of an option to attend a specialized high school. And importantly, when they look at their options, there are only 5 percent of New York high schools that offer at least four or five AP STEAM classes, biology, chemistry, physics, calculus. I am a Georgia Tech alumni and engineer. In April, the Georgia Tech president said, if you haven't had algebra in eighth grade and calculus and physics in high school, you're not getting into Georgia Tech. And furthermore, it's AP Calculus and AP Physics. New York is woefully unprovided in high quality STEAM schools. When people say the solution is to make all schools better, the problem is that 85% of the schools are below the US average SAT, and their size is 500 kids, that's 100 seniors. You can't stick AP Physics in that class, in that school with one kid. You are shutting the door to schools like George Tech and MIT. We have got to expand the number of seats. And I've laid out a detailed approach that lays it from 15,000 to 20,000 using facilities already known by the DOE. I have data tables, calcs, all that laid out in 20 pages. 
It's right, but many of you are saying that we're fighting over crumbs. That's absolutely true. We are fighting over crumbs when we're just thinking about a tiny fraction of the schools, but it is important to fight the structural racism, whether it's at those tiny portion of schools or at where we're talking about all the schools in the system. And I just want to say that the reason we're fighting over these scraps is because we live in a system that puts profit before people, that puts profit before our students, that puts profits before our children. And whether that means spending millions and millions and millions on war, or that means spending pennies on our kids, that's what that system means. Thank you.
public schools that tailor to special needs. I think, like the other speakers, STEM-focused kids are special needs kids. Just like if you aspire to be a Broadway star, you don't go to a STEM school. You go to LaGuardia. You go to Frank Sinatra uh, School of Arts. So special needs school for STEM is that they need uh, the right skills, such as multivariate analysis, such as complement and mechanics. They need the right teacher. They also need academic, academically similar-minded uh, peers to collaborate with. So I would say that the single and bias test has uh, shown and provided a future the, the STEM successful uh, STEM talents uh, for over a century. So if it's not broken, that's nurtured, that's growing, that's not break it. What is broken though? Well, I think is, for example, in the Bronx, you have seventy-four percent of kids that fail the proficiency test on the on the, on the map. However, eighty-seven percent kids pass the math test. So that's a disaster, <coughs> catastrophe waiting to happen. And the mayor and the chancellor will not be there to take the consequences. So instead, we must fund more better schools, more GMT schools, and also more uh, after school programs in the safe environment. So I urge you to keep the test, to increase the education funding and in the underserved neighborhoods and to vote for the city's future. Thank you.
Well, grades have, uh, you get a good grade if you're the teacher's pet, if, if you're likable, if you've got a good personality, and it's been shown in other research that grades, in fact, are biased against boys because a lot of boys don't pay very well. And, and, and girls tend to, anyway, what I want you to do is, I want you to please look at the Metis Associates study um, because it doesn't just consider grades as the output variable. It also considers tests as well. Because tests are also a measure of how, how kids are doing. It's an objective measure. And it's, it's a much more objective measure. So just don't take the research about grades and John Taylor's study. Look at, I encourage you to look at other studies before making a decision. Uh, thank you very much.
still a one-time examination for the included out of many items. So that is special at the high school can welcome more students who have special talents. Everyone knows eight or nine special uh, special at the high school are far from enough for the nation's largest public school system, which have 1.1 million students. Therefore, we suggested Cyber Centrics, Brooklyn, the Bronx, the State Island, by the same token, Bronx Science, we have five other locations. Bronx Science, they change its name to New York City Science High School, if they like to do that. Why do we say that? Specialized high school by name should be special. Not with the only the old fashioned science and social study or by rankings. Thank you.
to, to fix the education overall. It's only going to affect five high schools out of 400. It has a huge systemic side effect. Every time the results come out, people are shocked. When people say, this is a horrible thing. We need to fix our schools. If we do this, if we get rid of this test, we're going to be taking the batteries out of the smoke alarm and calling it the job well done. Cyberson was once too Jewish, now it's too Asian. It's always going to be something, and it's always going to exclude our underprivileged communities in New York City who deserve a fair shot. So I would ask you to reject the legislation. Thank you.
Therefore, I want you to consider my words in the unfairness of Blasio's bill. Thank you for your consideration, and please keep SHSAT.
right away. Right? Oh, or you can get a business card from one of the staff. Thank you, Joanna. I want to thank all of you for attending this forum. I want to especially thank all the speakers who made their points succinctly and clearly without disrespecting the other speakers. I do not appreciate the two people who consistently interrupted other speakers as well as abused their own time. I want to say that this is a democracy, but we also have something called decorum. The two minutes seems like a short amount of time when you sit here for two and a half hours. But I will say to you, Robert Jackson and I have the privilege of serving in the New York State Senate. There are 63 senators in the state of New York. Each one of us thinks we're the most important people in the Senate. <laughs> so in the Senate, we also get two minutes to talk about our opinion on any particular issue. So uh, yes, it would be great if we had unlimited amounts of time for every single person. The idea of the two minutes is so that everybody's voice can be heard. If anybody wants to say more, uh, we have to vacate the school because the school security guards have been nice enough to stay beyond their appointed time. They're working for free now, but I will be on the sidewalk. If you want to get another minute, another two minutes, I'll be right there. Or if you want to email the comments to Senator Jackson and myself, you're certainly welcome to do so. Thank you so much for being part of this forum.